say But it's you gave me life and I can't explain just how what you mean to me now Hey everybody, welcome to Worship Confessional number 5 Take Quadrillion Million Yeah, take 5 or 6, I don't know I've tried to do this like 3 or 4 times already today And I've been interrupted or stopped or whatever So I just finished Worship Confessional number 5 And uh, everything went great, finished it was all ready for it and hit the stop button and went back. Dog, man, it was like 13 minutes long, 12 minutes long, right? And I'll tell you, I'm loving doing worship confessionals, although I'm a slacker, big time slacker because I haven't done one the last few weeks, okay? And um, part of the reason it was 13 minutes long is because I was moaning out all my excuses why I haven't done worship confessional. And so I'm just going to skip that part. Sorry I didn't do them the last few weeks. I'm a slacker, period, slacker. That's understood now. So, and let me tell you, all you other guys, you know, man, I'm like digging, having fun doing worship confessional, and I'm having fun watching your worship confessionals. But if they're long, man, move on. I'm not going to be able to watch them. So the idea, I guess, is to just get up here and confess what we did, what worked, what didn't work, talk about our worship service, and move on. You guys don't want to hear about 12 minutes of my life. I'm not so dumb to think that you really do. So I scrapped the last one. I'm going to try to run this one down really quick and be done with it. So you might actually watch this all the way through to the end. And um, so anyway, yeah, last two weeks, um, I either wasn't leading worship or, or led worship and forgot the camcorder, it was gone, all this other stuff. So here we are, the week of July 15th. I was actually out of town. Um, our associate worship director, Shannon Lewis, he led worship at St. Simon's Community Church. And uh, we're going to try to get together and do a separate worship confessional for that one. There was definitely some issues to talk about, some funny ones and some that weren't not so funny for leaders to have to deal with. Um, so hopefully we'll do a separate one for that. But for me, I was actually invited to do some out outside ministry out of town. Um, a pastor called from World Harvest Church in Dublin, Georgia, which is about two and a half hours up from kind of uh, northwest up from here. And uh, their entire worship team was gone to the 407 conference to hear Hillsong United and Jensen Franklin, Ed Young, Israel Houghton, some of those people. Can't imagine why they'd want to go there. But um, my wife was there, and she's gone. I've been alone since Wednesday. They left last Wednesday. Today's Monday. They come back Wednesday night. I miss my wife and kids huge, big time. But anyway, um, so yeah, he called and said, Hey, Fred, would you come up to our church and minister and worship? Because our entire band, worship team, everybody, the leadership is going to be at the 407 conference. So I said, sure. And uh, Pastor David gave me his blessing. Thanks, Pastor David. Great church where I am who... Um, they recognize, you know, being able to send people out and sow into other believers, other communities, other worship experiences. So I went. Now, the deal is no team, right? No band, nobody to play with, just me. And so I finally made the plunge. I blogged about this last week on my blog over at fredmckinnon.com. And um, obviously, you know where fredmckinnon.com is because you're watching this. It's not likely that you found this video just by searching on Google or YouTube. If you do, hello. Hello. Um, but most of you find it through my blog. So anyway, I finally made the plunge and I purchased Ableton Live. Live is some sequencing, looping software made by a company called Ableton and it rocked my world. It was so awesome. I wish I had done this a long time ago. Basically, I took Ableton and had an entire band go with me to Dublin. An incredible band that followed my every move. I didn't have to follow them. They followed me. Here's what happened. Now, it takes long enough to figure out how to use Ableton. I spent most of the weekend studying up on it, experimenting with it. Um, it takes a long time to create loops, to record and produce loops. I didn't have that kind of time. I plan on producing my own right away. But um, So I found these a couple of websites. One is digitalworship.wordpress.com. Um, been reading that for a little while now. Greg over there, man, we've become a good friend now through instant message and email. He posts a lot of loops about Ableton and ideas about how to use Ableton Live in praise and worship services. And then another website that I found was interactiveworshiplive.com. And um, hooked up with that website, talked to the owner, Philip. Awesome, awesome company, awesome people, awesome service. And they actually have the licensing, the legal licensing, and they're producing complete audio loops for some of these popular worship songs. They're licensed. They take studio musicians, they go into the studio, and they record, they cover these songs in multi-track format, almost just like you hear on the arrangements on the albums. And you can buy the song in multi-track format for Ableton Live. 
And so I bought four songs, and they had it set up for me. FedEx the DVD to me so I'd have it in time. And so I opened up with the Lincoln Brewster version of Every Day, and it, it rocked. It's just like the, I mean, it's just like the CD. It really is. Uh, then I went into Everlast, no, Oh Praise Him, David Crowder version of Oh Praise Him, complete with a little piano intro and everything, which because it's a multi-track format, I could mute the piano track and play along live, but I had the whole rest of the band. We're talking bass, drums, drum loop, a couple of electric guitar tracks, acoustic guitar track, even background vocals, okay, the whole shebang. Um, went from Oh Praise Him into Chris Tomlin's Everlasting God and then into Holy as the Lord. I probably should do a whole separate confessional just about Ableton Live, but it's all that it's cracked up to be. I'm in love with it. Um, not only did I have all these multi-track instruments playing along with me, but I could put markers and I could loop back and repeat a verse or repeat a chorus or repeat a jam section as many times as I wanted, and it was seamless. It was my first time ever using loops in live worship. I was a little scared that something would hiccup or go wrong or maybe that the monitor wouldn't be right and I couldn't hear, but I heard everything fine. Um, Lappy did great, which is my affectionate name for uh, my MacBook Pro. I put the loops and the Ableton session file on an external FireWire drive, and man, it sucked up and it set the laptop right next to me. It was awesome, great. So that went well, and took a couple of uh, maybe about 30 minutes, hour nap in Dublin that afternoon, and then went over to the Sanctuary Church of Dublin on Sunday night and did the same thing, did worship there. So. Thanks to uh, Ferris Cox, the pastor there at World Harvest, and thanks to Randall Gerhardt at the Sanctuary in Dublin for having me. Had a great time and got home very, very, very late, about 1.30 this morning. Just as I got into town, the serpentine build on, uh, belt on my Explorer went out and my power steering, all the lights, everything went off and uh, the belt got hung up on a pulley and pulled it down into my radiator fan. So big disaster at 1.30 this morning as I was pulling into town, which finally ended with the tow truck hauling my Explorer away early this morning. So wasn't a great thing. But that's what happened, and hopefully I just chopped this worship confessional in half and look forward to talking to you more about it in the future and for this coming week. Stay alive, praising God. God bless you. Well,